here's a creepy eye and a mouth that I was drawn to for some reason. Kind of terrifying, not gonna lie. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to it. If you saw my face and decided to click on it and it's your first time here, thank you, that means a lot to me. My name is JC and I like to do story times, chit chats and rants on this channel, as well as the occasional self roast. And that's what today's video is going to be. I will be roasting some of my old journals. So I recently made a trip back to my parents' house and I collected some of my old journals from the archives and the depths of their garage and storage. And I brought them back to my apartment and I was kind of looking through them and I was like, you know what? Let's actually make a video about this because it'll be fun to take a deep dive into my mental state over the years and to kind of show you guys um, actually how obsessed I am with journaling because <laughs> it's still a problem. So if you like videos of just chit chat and hanging out like we're two friends catching up and you want to see me roast myself as well as some of my other story times, make sure to like this video so you can follow along for future that's not the saying. So if that sounds good to you and you enjoy the video while you're watching it, make sure to give me a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. And if you are on social media and wanna see more of this face and how annoying I can be on there, make sure to follow me. I am on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and you can see some of my other thoughts and goings on outside of YouTube. But with that being said, let's just get started on roasting the old JC. All right, so I have here three journals, um, and I'm not gonna go through them in detail, but we will go chronologically so, so we can see what's going on. So this journal takes me back to the late 1990s, early 2000s, where I was probably about 12 years old and I idolized my older sister because she had subscriptions to Seventeen Magazine and Teen Vogue Magazine. And so when she was done reading those magazines, I would devour those. I read all of the articles on like how to make out with a boy and how to smell good so all your friends are jealous and how to be more confident and try out for that school play. Like <laughs> such high school things. But I would read these magazines and I would just fantasize about living these lives of these people that I started this journal based off of those magazines. So I don't know if you can tell but I was when I first started journaling I was very much a cutter outer and paster a copy and cutter paster, I don't know. So this is basically just your typical preteen kind of journal where I would go and cut out things from the magazine and put them into little collages. So I called this collage Girly Girl and this collage was about cute purses and watches and heinous sunglasses and look at that cell phone. Like I wanted that Nokia so badly where you had to press each little key three times just to get the letter that you wanted peak of luxury for 12 year old JC. All right, now it's just getting weird because this page is just clearly from the Scholastic Book Fair magazine they send you home with from school. And I just cut out some books and made a collage to seem smart. Um, we have on here a Lincoln biography and a cat in the hat book. So um, I guess diversity at its best. Ooh. This is just a page of eyes. And I wrote, they're always watching. Was I a budding serial killer? <laughs> what did I have with the eyes? Oh, ho, ho. this is juicy. This is something my mom would have been disappointed if she knew I made a collage of people kissing. It says, young love, kissing, love, so kiss me. Oh, this is scandalous, but all I ever really wanted as a 12 year old was for a boy to kiss me. Now, I think my first kiss was when I was 15 or 16 years old. So <laughs> note to past JC, you gotta wait a few more years, you know, get your practice in with your pillow a little bit more cause you're gonna need it. You guys, I had a fixation with eyes and mouths. Look how terrifying this is. I just cut out dozens and dozens of smiling teeth and pasted it. I could have been like the next Buffalo Bill or Frankenstein trying to create my own body. That's insane. This is such a good time capsule, which is one of the reasons I love journaling because it really is capturing the moment in your life of what's going on during that time. And this is so funny because I have on here a collage of just all the things that I liked. 
and it includes iPods, like the first generation of iPods, still pretty iconic. I loved the movie Raise Your Voice with Hilary Duff, where like half the movie, her voice is dubbed over anyway, as if we didn't spend 10 years learning what her voice sounds like. So she's just like, whoa, 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 yeah, yeah, ooh, yeah. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have on here a lot of stuff about MTV because I was that girl who watched music videos on MTV and VH1, straightening the crap out of my hair, getting ready for school. So that's super funny to see. And then celebrities. Let me, let me look at some of these celebrities. I guess I loved Paris Hilton and Ashanti, uh, the guy from Sum 41, Drew Barrymore, Lil Bow Wow. At least I have some people of color on here because this is looking hypnotically Caucasian which is actually kind of true for, for most of the magazines back in that day. <laughs> but the last one I'll show you, I was pretty proud of because it's this cool mosaic collage that I did where I cut out individual pieces of flesh and skin tone and recreated this kind of cool little art piece that I saw. So I remember that one taking a lot of time and I had a lot of fun with that. And I think that was, that was the true scope of my artistic talent. Um, and then I stopped and I never, did collages ever again. <laughs> so that was my 12 year old journal. <laughs> the next journal is gonna be super duper short because a lot of these are way too personal for me to share with you guys, maybe in a roast part two, but I just, I saw this and I have to read you guys this page. I have no concept of how old I was when I had this journal because this is one of those journals and tell me if you're the same way where I'll get a notebook and I'll start journaling and then I'll give up journaling. So then I'll just use the rest of the pages for scratch paper. So I started journaling, as you can see, but then in here I have like YouTube video ideas as well as timestamps for when I'm editing a video. So clearly I just needed a page for something, but then I go back to journaling as well. I don't know, it's all very confusing. So I'll read you one page of this because I read this and it was so dramatic. Maybe I just need to do a dramatic reading of this. Let me make this extra unnecessary. This is the first page of this journal. I want to start a diary. I want to start a diary, but it sounds so daunting. Dear diary, every night sounds boring and unproductive. Yet every day I'm drowning in their relentless barrage of complicated thoughts, internal whisperings, and secrets begging to be documented. So when the urge to purge these persistent enigmas of my innermost thoughts, I will dedicate one page to it. 28 lines of this notebook will be all I'm permitted to vent, voice, and plead with. Sometimes a page seems like too much, like when I'm overwhelmed with an anxiety and can't put into words the roller coaster of emotions I'm expressing. Sometimes a page is too little, like when I find a rhythm and discover in the middle of a sentence what I really want to say. But whether it's a mental health day, boy troubles, or bad days, I get just one page of this silly hand-me-down notebook. From here on out, I am a shadow, and these are my secrets. Love, shadow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So dramatic and for what? First of all, after reading that, my first thought is, dang, I used to be able to like write kind of well. I used to like really enjoy writing and journaling, like actually journaling my thoughts. I haven't done that in years, but I was like, you know what? That was, albeit very extra. That wasn't, that wasn't too shabby of prose. Now, I remember my idea for this journal was I would write my deepest, darkest secrets and I would sign it Love Shadow and not like from JC. So that one day I could like publish this book of deep, dark secrets as Shadow and nobody would know it was me, but it'd be like all these salacious secrets and scandals. I don't, I don't have that many secrets and scandals. Um, if anything, you guys know about half of them because I decided to make a YouTube channel with my own freaking face instead. Um, <laughs> but great idea, um, decent execution, but I did not follow through because there's only about 10 other pages in here. I did like the idea that I only would get one page to vent my feelings for the day, but eh, it clearly didn't work. Oh, like here's a, here's a checklist of when I did that one video of a Dollar Tree photo shoot and I have like, my outline for that video. Maybe I should still use this notebook just to scratch paper because it seems to be helpful. Paper, pen, you, you get it, you get it. Oh, so this last notebook is the truest time capsule of my life. So in about 2017, I would say, actually <laughs> 2018, doy, I wrote it down, I 
was working at my job and the way I would do my planner was very like artistic and they were kind of like pretty to-do lists. And I had somebody who I worked with say like, oh, do you bullet journal? And I said, what the frick frack is bullet journaling? Sounds dangerous. She goes, no, it's basically like pretty lists. It's basically a way to track your habits, track your to-do lists, your spending, anything you can imagine, but just in a pretty format. And I hopped on Pinterest and I was like, oh, I need to do this as soon as possible. So I started my first bullet journal as kind of a way to track things in my life. So a good example would be all of the books that I read that year and I kind of made like a pretty spread. So that way every time I read a book, I was enticed to go and write down the title of it just to kind of like check it off and complete that list throughout the year. I also have movies that I saw in theaters that year. So it looks like I saw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 movies that year. My, my, have times changed, huh? <laughs> as well as all of the musicals I had seen, which I have seen a ton of musicals. I'm quite the theater nerd if you don't follow me on Instagram. Uh, so just kind of keeping track of musicals I've seen as well as how much I rated them. So that's how I started this journal, was very much of keeping track of things. So then I decided to take it a step further and track my daily routine. Now, if you haven't seen the video before this of the reason I ended an eight year breakup, I highly recommend you go watch that because that'll give you a better understanding of why this next section of the journal is so insane. So like I mentioned in that video, I was very much living like a housewife and I had so many things I needed to do to take care of the household that I needed a checklist to kind of keep me on track. And my checklist includes walking the dog, making dinner every night, cleaning the kitchen, putting away the laundry, doing some type of physical exercise, washing my face and doing my skincare, reading for a half hour, and then logging on my journal. So as you can see, I was keeping up with this every single night. And so every time I did this, I would check it off. So as you can see, I have some days in there where it's like, I'm too tired to make dinner or I'm too tired to get a workout in. And I was getting so insane with logging it because I just couldn't keep track of all the things that I was doing or needed to do within my routine and kind of like, familial expectations being with him. So it's kind of interesting to see over time how I get worse and worse at these habits, which is a great indicator of my mindset during that time because I was just getting so over it, getting so overwhelmed and not even enjoying doing these things anymore. I started to hate making dinner. I started to resent having to do the laundry all the time that you can kind of see how I stop caring over time. It's also kind of sad because I started tracking my moods. So I would see these really beautiful layouts for mood trackers. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. So I started tracking my moods where each day would kind of coordinate to something on the mood tracker. And I very vividly remember that when I would have a bad day, I wouldn't want to mark it because it'd be like, no, that's not going to make the layout pretty. Or like, no, I don't want to admit to like having a really bad day. And so I rarely would. And I can tell you that all I stopped doing the mood trackers because it started making me sad for how sad I actually was. And a really good example was I got back into the mood trackers during the pandemic and it's all sad, it's all depressed, it's all blue because that was the hardest time ever during the pandemic. And it was kind of interesting how that was the first month that I actually completed a mood tracker. And I think it's important to kind of note your mental state during a specific time in your life, but it's also like, it makes me sad, but I'm glad that I was actually honest about it and kind of put what I was feeling during that time. Oh, but going back to my housewife days, there I have a whole section of just the meals I was planning. Can we take a moment to read these? I was making balsamic glazed Asian noodles, salmon and duca spiced vegetables, beef medallions and scallion salsa verde, ground chicken lettuce wraps and baked Cajun cod and lemon garlic potatoes. I know, I know, I should be called JC Crocker or something with a, a menu like that. I used to cook a lot, you guys. Not well, not well, but that was part of my role. And um, I eat Top Ramen and prepackaged salad kits now every day, and I'm doing just fine. <laughs> Let's see, it says my October goals for October 2018 were to lose 10 pounds by Halloween. First of all, I think I have that written down every single month of my journals for the past like 10 years. I'm not losing those last 10 pounds, you guys. I've already tried. I only drink water and coffee. That's a good goal. Schedule the GRE, oh, schedule the GRE test. So after my breakup, I was like, I need to do something crazy. I need to do something for myself. 
I need to go back to grad school. And so I started studying for the GRE test, which is like the general, kind of like the SAT to get into grad school. I started studying for it, you guys. And I think I cried every single time I tried studying for it because I couldn't remember remedial math from high school, which is like a huge part of it. Uh, so I studied for three months and then I gave up, never took the test and decided to never go back to grad school. But that's funny that that's on here. I wanted to read two books and spend less time on social media. Instead, now I'm pursuing a job on social media. So <laughs> suck it, October JC. This one's cute. It has my travel wish list. I wanted to go to San Francisco, New York City, Arizona, and Colorado. And here I am at the start of 2022, and I accomplished all of those things. So it's kind of nice to set goals and track what your ambitions are, because someday you'll get to look back on it and be like, wow, I, I did that. Like, I'm so proud of past me, because I remember that being a big deal, like going to New York City and visiting Colorado that just seemed like such a far away goal, whether financially or because of my relationship or because of taking time off work, that now I'm able to do things like that. And I have even bigger goals of traveling abroad and going to Europe. So that's sweet. This is why I like journaling. Oh, and then it gets sad again. Oh, I'm not gonna show you that. That just, oh, this is just, that's sad. <laughs> So I'll read you, I used to do a highlight of the day. This was back in April, 2020, so a year and a half ago. And each day I just had to write one, one highlight. Now this was at like the peak of the pandemic. So it's kind of, it's crazy. Again, like all these are time capsules of how my highlights of the day are barely highlights because it was such a scary time. Like I wrote my highlight of the day was that I was able to go to the grocery store and meal prep. That's not that fun. I said, I went for a walk outside for the first time in two weeks. So scary to think about the time where it felt dangerous to even go for a walk. Like, that's terrifying. I wrote that I gave noodles a bath on one day, and then I wrote that I went to the office for the first time since March and had a productive day. Very scary time. So I don't know. That's that's just that's just weird. You know, you know that kind of weird feeling of that funny feeling of I'm so glad we've come so far from that, but considering things are starting to get scary again, I can relate to a lot of these things in this journal once again. So very, very spooky times. I love journaling. I still journal to this day. I'm not gonna show you it now because that's current, JC. You guys don't get to know my innermost thoughts right now, but I encourage you all to journal, whether it's bullet journaling like this in pretty kind of list keeping formats and just kind of keeping yourself on track, whether you do go the route of long paragraphs and prose of your deepest, darkest secrets, or even if it is like creating a weird ass face and mouth and eye collage because you're a budding serial killer trying to create your own little human, um, then do that. It's a great way to track your mindset where you are in life and to just kind of like get all of your feelings down on paper. I love journaling. I'm, I guess I'm trying to convince you guys to journal. You don't need to journal, but just know that I love it. But that's gonna be it for this video. Just another cute, fun one, like we're two friends hanging out, nothing super deep, dark secret. So maybe you guys learned something about me that um, I want your eyeballs. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> but if you like this video, I hope that you'll subscribe so you can join us for future fun. And let me know if you guys were a journaler and some of the weird things you used to journal. Cause I don't know, I can't imagine my mom stumbling upon this in the storage and garage and be like, <laughs> What is wrong with my daughter? <laughs> but I thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching this video and I hope you'll join us in the future. But I will see you in the next one. Toodles! So I have my old journals. Oh! My journal broke! Do you guys see? It broke into like a million trillion pieces! Dang it.